Well, welcome to Modeling Time with me, Brian Banna. And uh, continuing on with the RS2, RSC2 project, um, I've got the frames painted. Or I've got everything painted for the frames, the trucks, um, the uh, speaker enclosures, and everything. So let me get the camera set up over here, and I'll show you how the finish turned out. It really, It's really nice. I do need to put a, a gloss coat on it, even though they're painted in gloss. I still like to put a, a clear coat over them to protect the paint and it also unifies the finish because when you paint you know if you don't paint at the same angle and the same distance and all that you get a little bit of overspray and it, it'll dull some areas a little bit you know you won't get the perfect uh, finish across but if you put a, a clear coat on it it'll give you a unified finish all the way across and then I still need to put a satin varnish on these so let me bring the camera over here and we'll just get a quick look at the finish on everything. And there's one thing I want to touch on that I've uh, discovered over um, a modeling um, time and I want to talk about that so you can avoid it. So let me get the camera set up and we'll get right oh. to it. Alright, so I brought over just a, a, like a little bit of every, each part just so you can see the finish on it. So there's the uh, black on the frame. That was painted with Tamiya Gloss. Um, prior to that, of course, I showed you the frame was grit blasted and I got all the machining done that needed to be done and, and things like that, which wasn't very much. So that's the frame. There's a fuel tank. Uh, there's a truck side frame. And then here are the uh, Keep Alive enclosure or bracket and the speaker speaker bracket so the speakers like I showed you before they'll be going in pretty much like that and the last piece is the, the one of the uh, pickup strips you can see that's all painted now for the pickup strips I don't want to grit blast the bearing surfaces so I use a uh, pipe cleaners and stick them through there and then cut them off and that that protects the inside of the bearing surface also it'll protect the back face the part that um, faces the wheel and I don't grit blast that or paint that but I will go over that because there it doesn't cover it perfectly so there will be just a tiny amount of overspray so I'll use some lacquer thinner and clean that up on the back now what I wanted to talk about I paint my wheel faces so I get the the wheel faces all painted let me zoom in on this a little bit there we go make sure yeah that's in focus so I paint the wheel faces and, and such but I found out on my um, what is that the Pennsylvania GP 35 and my CPT and C RS 11 I was painting this surface here the right up up against the pin so what I do for the pin is I just take some masking tape wrap it around and then close off the end and now I put some liquid masking fluid on this face because on the uh, Pennsylvania GP 35 and the the um, CPT and C RS 11 I was getting a squeak and I thought maybe it was the the bearing surface I needed to oil it and stuff like that so I put a little bit of conductive uh, grease on there it was still squeaking and my it, it comes down to and this is my theory because everything is lubricated that moves all the parts that move have some grease on them so what I'm what I was theorizing and I believe this is the problem if I paint this surface here this face where you see the, the purplish color or the darker color that is the masking fluid. If I didn't mask that and painted that, then the bearing surface on your pickup strip, that flat face, which is on this side, um, is very close to the wheel. Now, if you notice, uh, if you look closely at these, these bearing surfaces, and I'm, I'm not going to take this off yet because I still have to... Um, I still have to uh, clear coat this but if you have these off and, and you don't have anything masking them off this bearing face sticks out just a little there's like a boss on it so it sticks out just a little bit 
And I believe that that would be rubbing on the paint surface and causing the squeak. So on my RS1s, I did not paint the bearing or this face of the wheel. And on my GP30 Rec Rebuild, I did not paint the face on this wheel. And they're not squeaking at all. So I believe that if you paint this face, it causes the squeak when it rubs up against the, uh, the pickup strip. So this is just a little um, something I noticed that I wanted to um, relay to all of you. Um, if you're going to paint your wheel faces, don't paint this area here, around the flat face that goes around the, uh, the, uh, the uh, axle tip. So that's, I just wanted to explain that and, and give you a little heads up on that. So now, I, now that I've explained that to you, I can go ahead and get all of these wheel faces painted and uh, weathered. So that'll be done. Then I just have to, I just have to get all of this stuff with a, a clear coat on it, which I'll do that today. And, um, and then get a satin varnish on it. And then I can put it all back together, I'll lube up the gears and all that stuff, and get it un and get it all back together. Now I understand that the gears and all are all made of Delrin, and you really don't need to lube them up. I just do it. I just put a very very small amount of grease on each um, tooth and on all the moving parts. Not a lot. I don't gob it in there or anything like that. So, and I'll go over that again. I did it in one video, but I'll go over it again, you know, lubing up, you know, how I go about doing that and getting all of this together. All right, so I'm set up over at my paint bench right now, not necessarily to paint, but to um, put these trucks back together and um, get the frames, you know, all done and uh, ready for the speakers and motor and all that to go in. So at this stage, I've got two of the frames put back together with their trucks and the fuel tank, and I'll do the third one on camera. Usually I'm sitting right there at the construction um, um, desk, and but right now I'm at the paint desk. So <clears throat> um, I thought I'd show you a few things before I get into this and um, and recap where I am up to this point before I start putting these together. And I thought maybe it'd be interesting to see how I do certain things and stuff like that. And one of them is cleaning my airbrush. If you paint a lot with your airbrush, I'm a heavy airbrush user. Um, I'm not a professional airbrush artist by any means, but I use the airbrush to paint just about everything. So I clean it a lot, and I thought, well, maybe folks would like to see how I go through the cleaning process, because after each use of the airbrush, like for instance, when I paint these trucks, clean it out completely. Then I'll go and put a satin varnish or a gloss varnish on them, clean it out completely. Um, after each color, I will clean it out completely. I won't just flush it out, but I'll completely clean it out because I want the airbrush working at its optimum performance so I can get good finishes. So let me get the camera set up real quick at the, uh, at the booth and I'll go through a mock clean. Oh. All right, so I'm set up at my uh, paint booth here and you're seeing a weird color blue light because there's LED lights inside the, inside the paint booth. So I go through a lot of lacquer thinner. I, I'll fill this bottle. I got this bottle at um, Michael's Craft Store. I got a bunch of these, but fill it with a uh, lacquer thinner. What I like, and I'll explain why this is a good bottle, or if you get something that has a opening like that on the top, and I'll show you why in just a moment. And uh, I use just, I go to Walmart, and I just get your standard lacquer thinner. I urge you, do not use the environmentally friendly lacquer thinner. It stinks horribly. It is terrible stuff. Do not use it. Just get the straight, real lacquer thinner. Um, so again, do not use the environmentally friendly or alternative lacquer thinner. And the same for um, paint stripper. I got um, the clean strip, um, strippies paint stripper and then Walmart was out of it, so I got the environmentally friendly stuff. Again, that stuff is horrible. It doesn't work as good, and it stinks up the garage terribly. Do not get any of those stupid, environmentally friendly, 
bullshit products. It's all a scam. Anyway, let's get the back to business off my high horse there. All right, so let's just pretend I just finished um, painting something and there's uh, some paint in there. And um, <coughs> if there's still paint left over in there, um, I buy these these cups off of off of uh, eBay, so I buy them by the thousand. And make sure now these cups are much more flexible, so there's a trade-off. Some cups will have reinforcing ribs on the inside. I urge you not to get those because when you're steering, you'll hit one of those ribs and paint will come flying out and splashing out. So I get uh, uh, the cups without the ridges. Now the trade-off that I found to get the cups without the ridges is they're a little bit more flexible so they slip out of your hands easy. So you just hold them in tighter. Basically I put them on the surface, hold them down, steer, pick them up by the by the uh, lip and then pour them into the uh, into the cup. So if I have any paint left over in there I'll just pour it into the cup and put that aside to be thrown away. Then I'll take a clean towel and I'll just wipe the inside of the cup out. Then flip the cap off. I'll put some lacquer thinner in here and I'll take a I get a bunch of old paint brushes or cheap paint brushes and I'll just steer it around and get all that paint off the inside of the cup and I'll just pour it out and brush the, uh, the, the liquid out and get it all onto the paper tower. Then I'll just spray it out. Then I'll put a few more drops in there. I'll unscrew the back. I'll unscrew the needle and I'll pull the needle slightly out because what I do is I, then I'll hold it back here and I'll go in and out with the needle like that. If you leave the needle all the way in and you go in and out with it, you're likely to shove that needle into the nozzle and spread the nozzle. So you don't want to ruin the nozzle. So pull the needle out and then just clean the needle up a little bit. Pour your liquid out and then I wipe the needle off in the lacquer thinner. So I'll just come and I'll wipe the needle off in the lacquer thinner. I'll set that needle aside, being very careful not to damage the needle point. Okay, so we probably got some thinner in there, so just spray it out. Now, I'll go in and I'll put some more lacquer thinner in there. I'll take my brush and I'll go into the hole, clean the hole, clean the uh, cup on the end of the nozzle, wipe that off. Then I use these dental picks. They got the, uh, they got the, um, uh, the little fuzzy brush on the end and I'll go into the into the hole there's lacquer thinner in the cup and I'll just clean the the barrel out so I'll clean that out dry it off spray it out then the last thing I do is I put my pinky finger over the nozzle I'll put my index finger on the trigger and I'll hold the cup this is where this um, opening that I talked about is important is I'll take it on the end, lock it in, press the trigger down, and back flush the airbrush. Let it up, spray it all out, wipe it out. Now you'll want to wipe the outside as long as there's no old paint and stuff on there otherwise you're just gonna smear paint all over the place then I'll put the needle back in all the way tighten it down empty any residue out and then put the back back on and that's it so I do that ever after every paint session so even if I'm changing colors, I'll do that. It doesn't take very long. You saw how long it takes. That's basically it. And like I said, when you're done, you can wipe the, the brush down as long as there's not paint all over this. If there is, I'll get another um, um, paper towel and wipe it down. But I don't wipe it down after every cleaning job. I'll do it after every like five or 10 uh, cleaning sessions and I'll wipe it down. But that keeps everything clean and ready for your next paint. Okay, so basically 
or not basically, that is what I do after each paint session with my airbrush. I clean it out. I want that airbrush to stay working perfectly for a long time, so I do that. I do need to get a needle sharpener, um, so that's on my list of things to get. Um, so, what I've gotten done up to this point is the frame and all the frame parts, the, the side frames, the gear towers, the fuel tank, the the pickup strips, they have all been grit blasted and washed thoroughly. Now with the gear towers, before I grit blast them, I, I grit blast them like this all together with the, uh, the two sides together and the bottom on. I cannot get, this is a type that doesn't have the screws where you screw two sides together. It's one piece and then the bottom clips on. Um, so it's very, very difficult to get that, that worm um, that first gear out that contacts the worm gear. So um, what I did was, so I didn't grit blast the worm gear. I'm looking in there and it looks like there's a chipped gear or maybe a piece of dust on there. Anyway, um, so I put a, some tissue paper in there so that that gear doesn't get grit blasted. And then I grit blast the whole thing. I take the tissue out and I wash everything thoroughly to get, you know, uh, first I blow it off, you know, blow all the grit off of it, then I wash it very thoroughly, dry it all out, and then I uh, paint it uh, Tamiya black. So that would be uh, this one, X1, Tamiya X1 gloss black. That was what I did with all of these black parts. Then, um, let that dry and I put a gloss varnish over it which is the all clad um, uh, aqua gloss I use that and uh, that unifies the finish so I get a nice even sheen over all the parts once that's all dry then I shoot on this all clad uh, semi matte which is a um, satin varnish so I'll shoot that on there. And you don't need to put a lot of it on there. I just put enough on to cover it to give me a dulled down um, version. Not flat, not semi-gloss, but in between semi-gloss and flat. And I like the finish really, really well. So once that's all good and dry, now it's time to put it all back together. So, and then, oh yeah, and then the wheels. So the wheels get put in their wheel masks and they're painted brown. I use this brown. I use uh, uh, Tamiya XF10 flat brown. And I paint the wheels. And uh, I let that dry. And then I put pigments on them. And I told you before I, um, before I um, paint the wheels, I put um, masking tape over the axle tips. And then I use... I use this um, Humbrol Maskol, and I have a toothpick that I use, and I put that Maskol over the face, the center disc on the wheel to mask it off. Then I can, because um, I, or um, then after I, then I paint them, and then I do um, use uh, this. pigment fixer here the MIG pigment fixer and I, I spray that over the wheel and it's still in the mask this is the I use those um, uh, uh, modelers choice wheel masks so the wheels are still in the mask and I spray the uh, pigment fixer over the face and then I use the pigments that I want and and dab it on there and then let it dry, brush it off, and then put a very light mist coat over it, and they're done. So this is the result of those wheels. So now what I can do is I can just take this masking tape and I can pull it off, and it pulls off the, uh, the mask all also. So I do that. Oh, before I do that, I use lacquer thinner and one of these these uh, Q-tips, and I'll dip it in the lacquer thinner, and I'll, and I'll rub it right around 
the wheel tread, not on the face anywhere, but just around the wheel tread and the flange and take off any paint and, um, and um, um, what do they call that, uh, pigment and clean up the wheel tread. So then that, that's taken care of. Then I can pull these off and we have a nice clean face in there. And like I explained earlier, I do that because on two of my models, this portion here, this portion here, you can see it's all cleaned up now. Um, oh, real quick, to clean that up, what I do is I take a pipe cleaner, I dip it into lacquer thinner, and I go and I clean the inside, and I brush the outside, and clean up that electrical face. So that's all taken care of. Now what I was explaining earlier was when if I used to paint all that flat surface and just leave the axle tip clean, but I'm finding that when this is over that axle tip, it has a tendency to rub also on the face of the wheel, that inner disc of the wheel. And because it's painted, it'll start polishing and then squeaking, causing it to squeak. So I don't paint that center anymore. So take care of that. So let me get all of these pulled off. Oh, look at that, I pulled the wheel out. I'll have to re-gauge that one. Okay, so that one needs to be re-gauged. That was really loose in there too. So I hold on to the wheel and pull these off. There we go. And one more. Now sometimes just the tape comes off and the like like that. So I just take um some tweezers and pull that masking off. There we go. And everything's cleaned up nicely. Oh, there's a little bit more left on there. You know, I need to get my OptiVisor so I can see this, see this stuff. So there, that's taken care of. So that's taken care of. Now let me get all set up again. Um, let me go get this wheel gauged, and uh, and I'll get it uh, get ready to move on to the next step. So, okay, I'm back. I got my OptiVisors so I can actually see. Even though I wear glasses, I still need OptiVisors to see. So, the reason why this wheel slipped out, because there's a crack in the, um, in the uh, axle gear. So, we'll just fix that. I got some, um, some Loctite 609 retaining compound. It's a green stuff. And I will pull that out. I will put a little bit of the green stuff into the opening and I will twist this back on and gauge it it's perfect Okay, there's a little bit that oozed out of where the crack was, so I'll just take a Q-tip and wipe that off. And that should take care of that. All right. Push it in just a little bit more. Okay, it's right in the center of the gauge, so that we're good on. Okay, next step. So, now that we've got everything ready to go, got my tools out of the way. Let's move the frame out of the way. Move the speaker and keep a live enclosure out of the way. All right, so now it's time to work on the gear putting all the gears in. So let me turn this, let me zoom in on this a little bit. All right, 
Wait, let me... My gorilla arm there. There we go. So now I can work on this, hopefully, in the middle. Let's move these aside. And it looks like the middle is about right here. Okay, so what I'm going to do... Let me zoom a little bit more. There we go. So I'm going to take my screwdriver and I'm going to pop off the bottom. Now on this gear tower, when I was taking the gears out, I accidentally cracked it. But it's okay. It's good. It'll hold together and it'll be just fine. There's a crack that runs right along here. But it'll be fine. It's still pretty strong and when you put the bottom clip on, it holds it together very stoutly. Okay, so first thing we need to do is I need to brush out the inside to make sure there's no grit still in there left over. Doesn't look like there isn't any, so got that there and that there. That's taken care of. So the next thing I want to do is I use two types of grease. I have this white grease and this black grease. So the white grease is this Labelle 106 and the black grease let me take this rubber band off here because I keep it so keeps it dry is a electrically conductive grease is the oops, carbon conductive grease from um, MG Chemicals and it's black. That's the black one that you see there. So let me wrap this back up. I wrap it up just in case it leaks. This will, uh, the uh, towel will soak it up. So far I haven't had any leaks. So, I'll, Oh, there goes the rubber band. These rubber bands don't last too long. So I'll, I'll take care of that later. So, so I use the white grease on all the gears and I use the black grease on the axle tips. So I am going to take some some white grease here and I'm going to brush it into the axle gear tabs that come out and then I'm going to brush it over the teeth. Now I use grease rather than oil because grease does not tend to migrate. Oil tends to migrate. There's that one. Now I'll take one, there's three gears and thankfully one of them is gray. So as you look at this, like if you if you forgot how the gears went in, you'll notice there's a hump right here. So that denotes the large gear is going to go in that position. And then I do remember that the gray gear is in the middle and then the smallest gear goes up against the gear that goes up against the worm gear. So you got the, the worm gear, the first gear that I can't get out, then the small gear, the gray gear, and then the large gear. So let's start with this gear, the small gear. And I'm just going to paint... Let me get this... Let me reposition this camera because I work right here. All right, so let's get. No, actually, I work. Let me see. Get this camera in the right spot here. There we go. That's where I'm working. All right, so now I'll take the small gear, get some white grease, and I'm just going to put it on the tip of the axle. On both sides. Try not to touch anything with grease on it because you might transfer that to your model. Then I'll take some chisel nose tw tweezers and we're going to push that right up into there. There we go. Now I'll go inside with some white grease and grease up each tooth. Now 
Now, realistically, you do not need to grease Delrin. On the newer Cotto models, they don't grease them. And they still run pretty smooth, but I do this as an extra precaution only because I want to, not because I have to. It's just one of those things I want to try, I want to do to help the models run as smooth and as quiet as possible. All right, so take the tweezers again. Take that, and that one goes there. Now I'll grease up each each tooth. I'm not using gobs and gobs of grease, just enough to cover the teeth. All right, now we got the the big tooth. I'm sorry, the big gear. Put some grease on the axle tips. And we're going to push that one up into there. That works good. Now we're going to get each. Now it looks like I got lots of grease on that one. But as I do it, I'll come back and grab grease off of there. And transfer it to other teeth. There we go. All right, so those are done. Now I'll grab a wheel set, get some grease on there, and we're gonna do each gear on the wheel. Just roll the, roll the gear or roll the wheels and just get grease on each cog or on each tooth of the gear. Stick that in there, get the next one. Put that like that, and now Flip it over, roll it back and forth, and we have some nice smooth running wheels. Now, the next thing, I got another paintbrush that has the black grease on it. So I'll take the black grease, I have it on a card and it's wicking away all the excessive oil. So I'll take the black grease and I'll just roll these gears or roll these wheels and brush it on just like that Make sure I'm on camera still. Just like that. Okay, that takes care of greasing up that. Now, when I soldered the wires onto these pickup strips, I had to make sure which one of these holes lined up with the, the truck side frame hole. And then I soldered the wire next to the one that doesn't line up. With the hole. So now I got to figure out which side this goes on to, and it goes this way. So we'll slip 
move that out of the way. So we'll slip that over that and that one over there. Oh, got a little grease on me, gotta wipe that off, okay. So now we'll do the other side and I gotta pick out the one that's correct. That one is not correct. This one is correct. So we'll just slip that over the tips. Like that, got grease on me again. And now we can put the side frames on. This one goes on. Let's see, keep. There we go. Now these are clocked, so this pin is not in the center. It's a little bit to the back to go to that hole. So we'll just slip it into that hole and snap it in place. There's that one and that one. And now we got to find the other one. Nope, not that one. There we go, that one. And we got to put that on there. There we go. Now we got a nice smooth ring. Now you can't push it in the wheels turn because you got the grease on it. And the grease is going to act as somewhat of a lock by itself. And once you put the frame on this, it'll roll real smoothly. But you can put pressure on it and the gears turn real, real nicely. So we'll take those straight up. And let me go ahead. And the, the next truck is the exact same. So let me go get that done. And then we'll do putting it all on the frame. Okay, so... Uh, both trucks are done. The one thing I didn't show, of course, is putting the bottom clip back in, but that's just snapping that back in. So both trucks are done. I can throw the grease, oh, no, can't throw the grease stuff away yet. Now it's time to put the worm gears in. So the worm gears are pretty easy. Um, basically, let me zoom in again. Whoop, too far. Is that focusing? There we go. Yeah, it doesn't look focused. So, what I do, just take some grease, take the end cap off, push this cap as far back as you can, and I just get grease right in between it. Grease that shaft there. Then I'll take a bunch of this grease and just paint the worm gear. And then I'll paint the end of the shaft. Make sure you've got that washer on there. Put that on there. And just get the shaft back onto the truck. So that takes care of Actually, this will go on after we put it on the frame. So let me just get this other one done real quick. Get some grease on here. Paint it on the worm gear. And then I used up all the grease that I put out, except for the black grease. I put so much black grease out because it was really oily, so I need to get that oil off the surface. There we go. Make sure I have the little thrust washer on there. Put that in there and put that aside. Okay, let me zoom out here. There we go. Now it's time to get the frame. So we got to put the fuel tank back on. That's easy, just pop it on, it clips right on the top there, takes care of that. Now, let's, so we got, this is the front, doesn't really matter, but right now, so we got to get these wires up through these holes, so let me get those fished up through there, get that one up through there.
there we go. There's that one. And now we can put the worm gear back into its gear tower. Push that on. And I didn't bring over the clips. Okay, so I got the clips here. And we can clip that one right down on there. All right, so that one's in place. Now we come to the back. We need to fish that through there. That one through there. Pull them up. Get these wires pulled out. Make sure everything swivel. Let's get this worm gear in there. Get that on there. Alright, now I haven't gotten the drive shafts on yet because I got to get the motor in and, and all that so that's when I'll put the drive shafts in. But right now, just got to make sure everything is working properly. Push these wires down just a little bit in there. The swivel's a little tight. How's that? Oh, much better. Much better. Okay, it's having a hard time swiveling to the left. And I'm trying to figure out what it looks like. The problem isn't the wires, but the, oh, there we go, there we go. the uh, gear tower clip wasn't down tight, so it was causing it to bind on the inside of the uh, weights there, so now it swivels just fine. Okay, so that takes care of putting the trucks and everything back onto the frame. Now what I have to do is go get the motor, um, you know, dialed in with the you know the wires soldered to it and all that. I got to get this um, these wires you know um, fished through and get the uh, brackets onto these brackets. You know, like for instance, see what that's front. So this wire will go through here. This wire will go through here. And I got to get this uh, in place and screwed down. That's the speaker enclosure. And then the same for the front. The wires will go through those those pockets and uh, get that on there. And uh, we'll be uh, moving right along. So uh, let me go get set up at the bench. I'll get two of these done. And then I'll put on camera getting all everything all dialed in um, and getting these programmed and running. Go. Okay, so when we're over at the paint bench, you saw how the frame went together with the trucks and, and the gear towers and greasing everything up and stuff like that. So now it's time to get the um, all the electronics into the, uh, the whole system. So that's what uh, this portion of the video is going to be. So let me get the camera set up over here. And... Uh, We'll get started on that. I've got every all the tools out and I'm all prepped and ready. I got the speaker wires tinned and cut to the right length, or at least the the uh, tin portion cut to the right length. So let me get the camera set up, and we'll get right to it. This is going to take a little bit longer because of all the steps involved, and I got to shut the camera off when I go to turn the flywheels down, and then shut the camera off when I you know have to go push the uh, the uh, flywheel back onto the shaft, and we'll show all of that and everything like like that. So again, let me get the camera set up and let's get right to this. All right, so let's get started on this. First thing I need to do, or the first thing I'm going to do is, is get the speakers put into these enclosures here. Now this is the front. This railroad has the short hood end designated as the front rather than the long hood end as it's set up um, for most railroads. Actually, most railroads have the short hood end as the front anyways. Anyway, 
Um, these sound fantastic. I'm, I'm not a speaker expert or an enclosure expert, and I just stumbled onto it um, as far as making the chamber size, you know, the way that I did in it. To me, they sound absolutely fantastic. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this worm, just this worm gear cover off. Let me see, I need my Optivisors. Where did I put those? Oh, there they are. I need my close-up glasses on, and let's get to this. So I'm just going to pop this uh, worm gear cover off. These things are an absolute pain in the ass sometimes to get off. Oh, that one came off real easy. Usually, when I pop it off one side and I go to do the other side, the other, the other, the side that I just popped off snaps back on. So we're going to just set that aside. There's a reason I did that, and you'll see that in just a little bit. All right. So the speakers I use, I don't have a lot left. So I've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, six. I got eighteen left. These are the speakers that I use. So we've got the, the um, part number here, manufacturer's part number, and speaker grand. So these are Knowles Grand speakers. And I got them from DigiKey. Let me just set that aside. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically glue these in just like that. So let me get some glue out here. Just put it on a piece of masking tape. It uh, bubbles up real nicely. See my broken drill bit. And just put glue all the way around the ledge that the speaker will be up against. Now, I won't be speaking through this whole video, but you'll see, I just want you to see everything. Since this isn't a detailed build, I thought maybe it'd be good to see what just a basic build entails. So, so far you've seen everything up to this point. I mean, I didn't show you me painting, but I think everybody knows how to paint. Okay, now... I do it with the, the spring-loaded portion up. There we go. And I get the other one glued on. I'm using medium CA for this. Alright, and again, put the spring-loaded portion up. Wipe off the excess. There we go. Alright, so that takes care of that part. Now, while I'm waiting for this to dry, I need to get the motor set up. So, this being the front. Now, on the RS2 and RSC2 frames, there's an arrow right on top of the, uh, the uh, um, weight that goes over the trucks that points towards the front. So this has an arrow going this way, and this has an arrow pointing toward the front also. So, and these, this dot on the motor usually should be up a little bit higher, but that denotes the top of the motor, of course. And these pads that go into the frame 
they're not the same. This one is narrower than this one, and the frame cutouts denote that. So this goes this way into the frame. Just like that. Now, if it was turned around, it wouldn't fit because this one would be too large to fit into the little slot that's in the back. So what I need to do is I need to take this off. It's slotted in the in the bottom, so we're just we're just gonna work at taking that off. Okay, so I know that the motor sits this way. The dot, if the if the frame is pointing forward that way, the dot on the motor is gonna be on this side. So I know that. So I need to turn this around like that, and I need to cut it. So I need to cut the bottom and the top. The top of the motor has the N, which denotes the negative. So we're going to take some um, photo etch nippers, and there's going to be two bumps on the top of the motor that hold this this um, pickup strip inside. And we're going to cut it right at those bumps there, and the bottom lead there. Okay. So we got that taken care of. Next, what I want to do is since I'm bringing the bottom lead up with wires, I want something to hold the wire in place. So I'm going to drill through the casing here. So I'm using a like 30, 35 thousandths drill bit. And I'm estimating where it's going to go through. So I start at a perpendicular, and then as it's drilling, I rotate it so that it's going to go straight down through. And it's going to go through the middle piece, and if it goes through proper, it looks like it's pushing out the sides a little so if I can get the drill bit to go nice and straight through and not push out through the side I'll drill all the way through but it looks like it's pushing out a little bit so now I'll go from the other side line it up and just drill it the same way And hopefully the two sides will meet nicely without this one's coming through the side a little bit more than I want but it hasn't broken through so I'll go through this side again and there we go okay now I just want to clean up any bits of plastic the side did break through so but that's okay it's okay it'll still hold it Get my soldering iron turned on. All right, so I'm going to put a black wire from the bottom and a red wire from the top. Interestingly enough, though, it's opposite on the uh, on the decoder. To get it to go the direction I want it to go, I have to connect the negative of the top to the positive of the decoder. Okay, so now I'm going to be using the red is Miniatronics. There's the part number right there. 
and the black is Miniatronics and the part number is right there again so let's get the black out I'm going to strip the black just take some some sprue nippers just grab that squeeze it a little bit squeeze it a little bit and then pull it off twist it and now we'll tin it All right, now I want to trim that just a little bit shorter. Okay, and now use my vise here. Put that up there. Put some flux in there. Back on the on the wire. Get my soldering iron again. And that's now soldered in place. <clears throat> now what I'll do is I'll pass this wire through the frame. There we go, and it's nice and tucked in there. Next, I'll do the red wire. Let's get this thing tinned. There's my brush. There we go. just a little bit all right and now let's get this soldered onto the motor lead There we go. Now you'll notice I soldered this wire at an angle. That's because the the points that it'll be uh, uh, soldered to on the board are like right over in this area here. This one can come up and go over, but that takes care of that. Now, put this aside. We'll use that again in a minute. Now, this motor goes here. So this is the front, and I need... As I talked about earlier, I need to turn this weight, this flywheel, down just a little bit. The amount I tank off is, is really not that much. So I need my puller. This is one of those Northwest Short Line puller sets. Now it comes with two pushers. You got a, a large one. And you got a narrow one, or a fat one and a narrow one. You use the fat one first. And it depends on how tight these things are. Sometimes you can do it with your fingers, and sometimes you need an Allen wrench. Need an Allen wrench on this one. There we go. Just popped it. 
Now I need to use the narrow one to get inside and push that shaft all the way out. Now some of you might be thinking, well how do you know how much to push it when you put it back on? How far do you put it back on? And I'll show you that when we put it back on. There we go. So we've got that taken care of. And since I don't need to do this anymore, I can put the push the puller away. Let me see which one of these do I need? I need this one. Okay, so now let's go. Actually, before we turn this while we have the camera here, these are ready to be soldered. So let's just put the motor there put the wires over there for now and let's get all this taken care of okay now i'm not going to solder to the pads right up on the top there um, this width is approximately the same width as the inside of the hood so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pop these off And then I'm going to use the use the uh, photo etch nippers, and I'm going to nip it right down at the base down here. That one, and that one. Okay. So now, what I will do is I'll put a little bit of flux on those all right I'm going to take a small piece of, of ESU Loke sound brown wire I got enough I've got all the different color wires for all the different uh, connections to make a little bit of solder there and we're just going to Touch that one there. We're going to put a little bit of flux on this one. Get a little bit of solder again. And I got to keep this soldering iron away from the magnet because it will attract it. Put that there. Now what I need to do is I need to press these down into the channel to keep them from interfering with the side of the hood. And when I pulled that clip out, it left a channel for the wire to go right up through. So let's do that to this side. There we go, and right through the side there. There we go. Okay, so now we need to do the same thing for the other side. So we'll pull these up a little bit, and we will clip them. All right, put some flux on there. And we'll do the same thing with these wires. Let's 
there's too much solder on that. I need just a little bit. There we go. So let's get this one done first. There's that one. Let's get this one. Too much solder. There we go. All right, so that takes care of soldering this. All right, so now you know that when you connect two speakers together, they need to be to the same terminals. So how do I know what to do there? Well, if I look at the back of the speaker, there's numbers and symbols and stuff like that on there. And there's a hashtag right here, so that's closest to this one. So that means this, this um, pad needs to hook up to the same one on this side that has the hashtag net closest to it. So it would be this one, this wire, and this wire, these two wires, will need to solder together. And then this wire and this wire will need to solder together. So that'll be done a little bit later. So we'll set that aside. Okay, so now it's time to get this motor, or this, uh, I'm sorry, this flywheel turned, so we can get the motor into the frame. So I'm going to have to turn the camera off, I'll set it up over at the lathe, and we'll get this flywheel turned down. Okay, so I'm set up at the at the lathe, and what I want to do is I want to make sure that the large portion has a sufficient enough room outside the jaws that I can move this bit in and not hit the jaws. So what I do here is I set it in there and I slightly tighten it and I wiggle it until I'm certain that it's it's in there true so now I'll turn it on oh it's not plugged in I think you need to plug these electrical components in before you try to use them okay so now it's spinning pretty pretty even so it's going to get noisy because I use a vacuum to pull the chips off. A little bit fall down, but I don't want them flying all over the place. So I'm going to be using a vacuum to, to pull the chips off. And when I'm done, I will come back with a, with a flat file and I'll just round this edge over because it'll get really sharp and I'll round that edge over.
And that's all it takes to turn that flywheel down. So there you got an idea of what the flywheel looks like. So let me get set back up and we'll get this pushed back onto the shaft. Okay, so now I've got <clears throat> the motor set up into my milling vise and I've got the bottom um, flywheel flat against the base of the vise so it's standing vertical and I've got the column centered on the uh, shaft. And so you might say, well, how do you know how much to push it back down? Well, a long time ago, I made this gauge um, for Cotto motors. So if I ever have to pull the shaft off, I know how much to push it back down. So I just put that in there and I just take the, uh, the mill, put it on there firmly and just slowly push it back down till it touches the gauge. And that's it. All done. So now the shaft or the flywheel is back on um, the correct space away from the motor that it was before. So it'll, it'll make contact with the drive shaft just like it did before. Okay, so we're back at the uh, workbench here. And uh, one of the important things about putting these flywheels back on is to... What the heck is that? Oh, it's a piece of metal that's attracted to the magnet. So the important part of that is making sure you push that flywheel straight down because you can bend these shafts pretty easy. So if you're at an angle, it's possible to bend the shaft and such. So you don't want to do that. The next step I want to do before I put everything back together... So I'm going to take a little bit of oil. You can use thin oil. I use this thicker oil. And I put it right at the point where the shaft enters the motor bushing. Just put a little drop there. And another one on the other side there. Then I'll just spin this. Moving it in and out and spinning it. That'll help keep that shaft nice and lubricated. Now, this motor will go in this way, so I need to make sure I put this back on the appropriate side. Let's see, that's the big, the big slot, so that goes this way. And we'll get that back on there, like that, and that back on there like that and we're all set now I can put this motor back in before I do that it's time to get the drive shafts in place so what I do with the drive shafts I get my grease out again get some grease on there put it on the ball end it fits into the worm gear Put that back into the worm gear there. And we want to do the same thing for the other one. A little bit of grease on there. Okay. There we go. Stick that on there like that. All right. Now we want to grease up the inside of the flywheel where the hex head will be making contact and I do this because I want all bearing surfaces, surfaces that move against each other to have a little bit of oil it helps to keep everything very very quiet and those other two models that I did um, when I run them without sound, they are whisper quiet. There's no sound coming out of them at all. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put that shaft in there. Get this motor dropped in. Like so. Then we're going to put this shaft in. Get that on there, and we're going to put the gear cover or the worm gear cover back in place. 
Make sure it's all snapped in. And now it's time to screw the motor back in. All right. So we're gonna hold that in place. We'll just turn it upside down and just put the screws back in. Where's my screwdriver? What did you do with my screwdriver? This, oh, that's right in front of me. There we go. Okay, so there we go. The motor is now in place. Everything's good to go. All right, now what we need to do is I need to cut these tabs off the top because I need to glue the uh, DCC board onto this flat surface. So I'll just take this knife right here and we'll just start cutting. Okay. This side's a little bit harder to do because this area right here is really thin. So you want to try not cutting into that. There we go. That's nice and flat there. All right. So now we need the decoder, which will be the the Loke Sound fifty eight eight twenty one. And while we're at this, we're gonna, we're gonna pop off the decoder off the board. Leave it in the box there for a minute. And the board is gonna go this way. So, what we need to do first is we need to get these pieces installed. And I'll show you why we need to do that. So we're gonna get these wires underneath it get the screws clean off the threads There we go. Now everything's secure. These wires are secure. And they can flow freely underneath that. Now the reason why I put that on is because this board is going to go right up against the back of that speaker enclosure. 
And the reason it has to go up against the back of that speaker enclosure is because where this piece is here on the shell, where the cab is, this end almost goes right up against the front or the inside of that opening in there, this, this cavity. It doesn't touch it, but it's almost there. So I want to make sure there's good clearance, so I'll glue it right up against the back there. So to do that, we use some, I use this silicone, Silicon Max, DAP Silicon Max. And take that off, take that off. And now I'll get some goo out of here. And we're going to spread it over the top of this. And this side here. Okay. Get me a paper towel here to wipe it all off. And now we're going to take this decoder and we're going to center it right on the back of the speaker. Push it up against the speaker and then let it settle down. And we're going to look at it and make sure it's straight on with. There we go. And now I have to let that dry. Okay. Now it's time to let it dry. So I'm going to shut the camera off for a little bit. And once this dries, about an hour, once this dries, I can come back and start putting it all, get everything all back together. Okay, so this has dried for a couple hours and it's pretty secure, it's not moving around, it's what I want it to do. So let's get a Keep Alive or Power Pack all set up and ready to go in. So this is the Power Pack. And get that out of there. Okay, first thing I do with the power pack is cut this shrink material away from it, making sure I don't hit any of the components. There we go. Okay, so there it takes care of that. More trash. Okay, so the power pack. So this is the diagram for the power pack down here. And I need to orient my, where did I put, the, there we go. I need to orient the uh, the chip in the same same way as it is in the drawing or in the picture. So it's upside down. So we're going to take this sticker off of here. Put this right. Right in my little vise here. Okay, so if I look at this diagram and I look at where this big white 
rectangle or square is, that's this piece right here. So I want to orient this just like just like that. So basically just like that. So here's the here's where it plugs in. That's where it plugs in right there. And uh, so you got this big square here, which is that piece right there. You got this little square here, which is that piece right there. You got this smaller square, which is that one there. And you got all these little tiny ones. You got this small one here, which is that one right there. So we want these three pads, which are that one, that one, and that one. Okay. So let's see if I can... I don't really want to zoom in, but let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so we want, let me look at that again, make sure we want these three pads over here. Okay, so looking at it that way, or actually I got to look at it this way, which puts the picture this way. I've got red, white, and black. So let me get my, oh, I got to plug it in, my uh, soldering iron, get that plugged in. There we go. All right, so these, are, these leads are already stripped and tinned, so you don't need to do anything to them. So what I'm going to do is put some flux on these three pads. Okay. And so we've got red, white, and black. So we're going to take the red one, put some, put some flux on it. Is that on camera? No. See, get some flux on there. Get some little dab of solder on the soldering iron. Hold that there and just solder in place. Now we're going to do the white one. Let's get the white one out here. Get some flux on that. Get a little dab of solder on here on the iron. Get the white on the appropriate pad and just touch it to it. There we go. And now we just need to do the black one. So we get some we get some flux on there. Get some little tiny piece of solder on the iron, get it on the pad, and they're all done. So that takes care of the keep alive, so we're going to just put that in its little tray here, until we're done soldering all these wires on. Okay, so now it's time to get all these wires soldered in place. So let's start get the motor wires over here and let's get these wires organized. Alright. And get these screws cleaned up.
get these screwed in. Okay, get this screw cleaned up. So that's in and these wires are now in their channels, but this um, power pack um, bracket doesn't cover all of the wires. So what I do is I've cut a piece of Captain tape and I'll put that right over the top of them. Oh. Get this get this uh, flux brush all stuck to my arm so I'll just wipe it off a little bit and put it where my arm won't contact it. Now I just need to get the wire down into the channel. There we go. Get the tape over it. Pull the wire back so it's not sticking to the tape. There we go. Okay. So now I just have to trim the tape, which is easy. Just cut it and slice it down. There's a piece off. Now we'll trim it off the front here. So it's not sticking and interfering with the flywheel. There. Put it around that. Around the wire. And there we go. Alright, so that's that's got the the wires held down nicely and uh, the wires can slide underneath the bracket and in that groove okay so let's let's get these motor wires cut and soldered on first because they're the longest all right so the red one like i said much earlier the red one has to go to the motor positive so the negative has to go to the positive so that on my low programmer everything runs all in the same direction. So all my locomotives from when I started doing um, these um, installations to now, all will run in the same direction according to my low programmer and the direction on that. So this will be forward. So this one has to go here and the black one has to go to the motor minus. So I'm going to get a little bit of a lead on these take them over and go okay I think that's good and I will cut them right there and then I'll put these back in their packaging after I'm done with all of this so now we're gonna strip these and tin them Okay, Get some flux here, put some on that one, and put some on that one. Get some solder. Tin that one. Get some solder. in that one all right so now let's see this one needs to go now we need to route the wires my arms all sticky from 
having that flux brush stick to it. So, so we're going to stuff the wire up in there like so and I'm going to bring it right over the top and it's going to go right in. So I need to trim this wire a little bit. There we go. I need to put some flux on there and on the pad. Let's get that wire out of the way. Get some solder on there. Get a good amount of solder on there. Stick it into the hole there and solder it. Whoop, took it out too fast. All right, so that takes care of that. Get that wire underneath there. Okay, so there's that one. Now it's time for the black one. Come in. Go underneath also. Okay. And I'll bring this one up to the next notch. Let me cut just a little bit off the length of that. Okay. Let me get some flux on there. On the pad. Let's get this down into the Oh, there. All right. And let's get some solder on there. All done. Okay, so there's the motor wires are soldered in place. So those will be good. Now we need to do the speakers. So remember, what I said you got to connect the same pad from each speaker. So this one, this one has a hashtag closest to it, and this one has a hashtag closest to it. So we're gonna put those two together. We're gonna bring them over here, and we're gonna say that's about how much wire I want. Oh, let me even them up. All right, so let's see. How much wire do I need? Okay, let's go there. So let's cut it there. Let's tin these and then solder them together. That one. Get this one. All right. This arm is getting really sticky. Gotta do something about that. But let's get this done first. See, I'm on camera. Okay, good. I hope that you guys are enjoying this and it's not too boring for you. But I do want to show you all the steps involved so that you get a good idea of what it takes and maybe what you might want to do when you don't want to do all that fine scale detailing but you want to get your models running really good. Okay, so now we're going to put those two together. Make sure they're even here. There we go. Some flux on there. Solder those two together. 
Cut the tip off a little bit. Okay. Now those two can solder. Let me get these two together here. There we go. Okay, so those two can solder into any either one of these speaker speaker connections. So let's do that. Okay, so there's one. Now, let's do this other one. Do some wire management here. And let's, since one has to travel longer than the other, I will not. We're going to go about right there, cut those. What I was meant to say, since one has to travel longer than the other, I'm not going to even up the ends and then cut them. There we go. Let's get some flux on those. And let's get some solder going. Twist those two together. Some flex on those. Some solder. into speaker slot number two. Get some flux on there. Get some solder. All right, so the speakers are in. So those are taken care of. Now what I might do is put a piece of tape like right over the top of that, those wires to just keep them down in there. Keep them, keep them, you know, tight up against the speaker. I could also glue them if I wanted to a little bit right in there, but not worried about it right now. All right, so now it's time to do the truck wires. So these are gonna actually come up from the outside I wonder if I could bring them through this hole. Bring them through that hole. And then right down. And that'll keep them away. So if I bring them through this hole, bring them down like that, that'll keep it away from the flywheel pretty good. Let me get some flux on there. There's plenty of wire back down on there back by the truck so it can swivel all right now if i bring this up like that we have a good path away 
from the flywheel. That's good. I didn't do that on the other ones, but this actually works better than what I did for the other ones. The other ones I just brought up right along the side here and then in, but this actually works pretty good. I like this. I'm not going to go change the other ones. The other ones will work just fine the way they are. So, if I do the same thing here, get some flux on there. Do that. Get some solder. All right. Let me bend that up so it pulls tight on there. There we go. And we got the wires away from the flywheel. There we go. Okay, that works. I'm going to do that for the back ones, too. Because I'm not using those holes for anything. No screws or anything are going through there. Actually, no, I'm going to do what I did on the other ones. So I bring it up between the pads. And then I come straight back down into the hole. Like that. And that definitely keeps it away from the flywheel. Put some flux on there. Get some solder. Well, my solder's it needs to come out some more. There we go. All right. So we got that. Let's get some solder on here. Okay. That one's taken care of. Now we'll go to the other side. Come up between the pads. I know you can't see it on camera because the speakers are in the way. Come up between the pads. Go upside down and back through the hole. That'll do that. Let me put some... Flux on there. All right. So that takes care of soldering all the, the wires, of course, except for the lights. So we got everything in and when the shell goes on the wires will just be pressed down over like that now we can take our keep alive and we can plug it into its socket or the the uh, the board sound board plug it into its socket then we take the keep alive and since there's a circular hole or circular cavity in there that goes just a little bit past center I can slide this right into there and it holds it down and then the shell you see this um, where's my pointer here we go see this opening right in here it comes up a little bit in the front and in the back these wires can flow right through that right through that opening and not I don't have to worry about it um, um, getting interfering with the um, flywheel or anything like that and even when I put the interior over it this cavity here sits a well above that opening in the shell so there's plenty of a channel for that to go through so this is all done and these wires are just kind of go down and over to the center and stuff. So this is all ready for programming. So let me go get this programmed and um, um, we'll come back. I'll come back and we'll see if we can uh, get it, um, a good recording of it on the, on the video so you can hear what it sounds like. I really like the way that these speakers sound. I really like the sound coming out of these and hopefully it'll translate into the video. 
Okay, this really isn't for a visual thing. It's more just to hear what it sounds like. The one that I was working on in the video is, is programming right now, but it's going to take a half an hour. But these two have the same sound file in them. So let's go ahead and hear the horn. Now we'll do the bell. And now we'll start it up. Alright, so that's <clears throat> the RSC2, but the RS2s sound exactly the same. So, so that takes care of putting the frame together and putting the electronics in, the decoder and the speakers and, and those things. So you saw how the, you know, the parts were grit blasted, I got them painted, um, showed you what I painted them with, what I clear coated them with and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, greasing all the gears and and such and then putting the electronics in the uh, DCC board the speakers how the speaker enclosure was um, oriented and how I designed that and the um, the power pack bracket and how all the wires go in and soldering it all together so I hope you enjoyed that and if you lasted all the way through to the end here I really do appreciate you taking the time to watch this I hope you did get something out of it and maybe something you can use so the next step is to start working on the sill units so the modeling part is coming up now there's really not much going to be done to these um, looking at them is just put on the Kato um, lift bars the uh, grab handles and then I'll put a um, a uh, train line hose in here as well and that's basically it and it'll be ready for paint the hoods not really much other than putting the uh, grab irons and such on it um, I do want to put a horn up on the on the front here so I got a horn here and I'll have a horn here um, in these packages um, Cotto does give you two horns so I will be putting them both on and then it'll just be paint and decal and stuff like I did with my RS1s so that'll take care of that. So anyway, um, the next video will be working on the, the ciliates. So again, thank you very much for watching.